Hello, and welcome to the Infletra webinar on testing Salesforce Lightning with Rupees. Today's presentation by Dennis Markotsev will talk about why you would want to use Rupees to test Salesforce Lightning and some of the specific cases. We'll then have a practical demonstration of how you would create a new contact in Salesforce Lightning using Rupees. We'll record a simple test. We will look at the tree of objects that are recorded. We will add a verification step to verify the data was created correctly. We'll show you how you can include screenshot capture with the click of a button. And we'll include some more advanced topics around how to do data-driven testing where you want to create multiple contacts with different data sets. And also how you would integrate Rupees with Spira Team for distributed testing across multiple machines and platforms. Hello, everyone. Uh, reasons to test Salesforce Lightning uh, are pretty standard. So Salesforce uh, is a moving target. Uh, Salesforce updates the platform uh, frequently, and ISVs update their integrations and uh, add-ons uh, for the platform. Also, uh, customers do local changes uh, to their configuration. So uh, if you are a customer, you probably may want to check that uh, critical business processes work as required as the platform updates. Uh, as ISV, if you are creating and working on some solution that enhances Salesforce functionality, you may want to test your components or, or complete solutions. And uh, as a system integrator, you may want to validate your solution before uh, handing off to your clients. So uh, Salesforce uh, provides uh, tools for uh, testing uh, Lightning experience. Uh, at the server side, uh, you can write unit tests using uh, Apex. And uh, at the client side, you can use Lightning testing service uh, developed by Salesforce. And uh, both Apex and Lightning testing service, the unit testing uh, frameworks, uh, so you typically use them to create a lot of tests that uh, run uh, frequently, they run fast, and they're very reliable. And uh, anyway, uh, you still need to create uh, integration and end-to-end uh, -end tests for your Salesforce solution. So. Uh, uh, this is a small portion uh, of the whole test coverage, end-to-end uh, -end tests and integration tests, according to this famous mm. test pyramid. Uh, so uh, we recommend uh, to use RPs for uh, creating those end-to-end uh, -end tests. Uh, why RPs for end-to-end -end testing? Uh, RPs is a general purpose solution for UI test automation for desktop, uh, mobile, and uh, web applications. Uh, it's very lightweight and it's uh, easy to install and configure. So all you need to start with Salesforce testing, you just download the setup package, install uh, it. It is very fast. And uh, to record uh, your test scenarios and browsers, you just need to install uh, browser plugins, and you are ready to go. Uh, Rapiz has very uh, low learning curve, so you can start creating uh, tests uh, very rapidly, and you can gradually romp ramp up the complexity of your test coverage. So you can start with simple record and playback approach, and then once you get more familiar with the tool or have more requirements, uh, to testing uh, your Salesforce solution, you can uh, more your you can make your test coverage more and more complex. Uh, you can organize it in a modular way, uh, and you can uh, implement uh, complex logic and uh, integration uh, with uh, other solutions uh, or these things. And also, Rapiz is integrated with the CI and ALM tools, so it can uh, definitely feed your um, development uh, and testing infrastructure. Okay, so let's see 
uh, how a piece uh, can be used to record uh, a pretty simple uh, Salesforce test. So here I have Salesforce opened. Uh, this is Salesforce Lightning experience. And here is uh, a piece. So let me create uh, a new test. Uh, Rapis is integrated uh, with the Spira team, uh, which is an application lifecycle management solution from Inflectra. And uh, it is used for tracking uh, incidents, uh, requirements, and uh, releases. And uh, what is more important for us, you can use it to uh, organize your testing efforts and uh, schedule remote test execution and uh, analyze results of this execution. I will show this uh, in more details uh, later. What is important for us uh, at the moment is that uh, with RAPIS you can uh, create a test and immediately link it to a test case inside the Spira team. So let me create a new test case. Let's name it. Okay, here it is. And uh, when I create a new test, I need to choose a methodology which I'll, which I'll be using. Since uh, Salesforce is running uh, inside the browser, I am choosing uh, cross browser testing support. Okay. And the last thing I need to choose here is which browser I will be using for recording. I will use Firefox. And uh, one last choice uh, is you can uh, work with your tests uh, using JavaScript and uh, use, you can use JavaScript to create a complex logic uh, for your tests. Uh, for simple uh, scenarios, you can use Rupees Visual Language. Uh, and this is a spreadsheet-based uh, approach uh, to uh, organizing uh, testing steps. So let me choose RVL at this point. So I created uh, a simple test and my RVL spreadsheet uh, is empty at the moment. And let me start recording uh, of a simple uh, test scenario. So I press record button. And at the bottom right corner, you can see a recording activity dialog. Uh, it will show uh, actions that uh, Rapis will capture during my interaction uh, with the Salesforce Lightning. So I click on Contacts on the menu bar, and you see that my click was recorded. So let's click on New and create a new contact. So to create a contact, I need to specify the name uh, of my contact, the last name, and probably choose uh, an account to which uh, link my contact. And here in the recording activity dialog, you can see that Rapis captured all the actions and that it recognized uh, the list of uh, accounts that was presented uh, is a list, and the action that was captured is select item uh, from, from this list. So actions that Rapis captures, they are pretty high level. Okay, let's continue. I need to uh, save the new contact, uh, and the button to save the contact is on the recording activity dialog. I need to move it somewhere. So I press pause to Stop intercepting keyboard and mouse. Move to the left side. Resume and save. Okay, so the new contact was created. Uh, when you uh, implement test scenarios, uh, you need to verify that uh, things go exactly the same way as you expect them. 
So let's verify that uh, we see uh, the name of the new contact uh, at the uh, top left corner uh, of the uh, window. So I am placing my mouse uh, over the name and press Ctrl-1 keyboard shortcut. And it presents uh, the properties of the control that Rupees uh, found under my mouse. Uh, and uh, I can check uh, which properties uh, of this control I want to check uh, during uh, execution uh, of my scenario. Uh, so let's check that uh, inner text uh, of this element is Harry Potter. So I check it, click OK, and the verification uh, code is generated for me. Uh, OK, so let's go to contacts list. And here we see a grid with three lines. Uh, let's verify that this grid contains uh, three lines after I added a new contact. So I press Ctrl-1 again. Rapis recognized this grid uh, as, a, as an object. So it did not uh, stick to a cell uh, over which I put my mouse. So let's scroll to the property row count and check it. Okay. Uh, let's click uh, on the name of the new contact. And here uh, in the recording activity dialog, you can see that I clicked on the cell and Tropis captured that. And in the data column, you can see that I clicked on Harry Potter value in the name column. So uh, if this value will be uh, in another row uh, during uh, execution of my test, Rapis will still be able to find it and you will not need to make any changes to your test. Okay, so let's uh, delete this contact to move uh, the system into the initial state. So I press delete button, delete. Okay, let's uh, look at the full list of contacts here. So you see that Rapis captured that I uh, selected uh, an item from the popped up uh, list. Uh, let's go to home and click uh, finish. And insert my steps into RVL spreadsheet. Uh, this RVL spreadsheet has a pretty uh, simple structure. It contains a few predefined columns, uh, which are self-explanatory. Uh, and uh, with the comments that Tropis generates for record detections, it's very easy to understand what uh, this uh, test uh, does. So, the structure of any line here uh, you, looks like you choose the object and you choose the action that you want to apply to this object. If you need to pass uh, some parameters uh, to the action, like uh, do set text, then you have a, cho uh, have a, have a means to specify uh, your parameters here. And, uh, since it is a spreadsheet, it's not a programming language. You don't need to bother about uh, any uh, braces, uh, about any quotes or uh, semicolons. So you just type uh, the data that you want to enter into your application uh, uh, as is. Okay, so we have a simple test. And uh, let's do a couple of adjustments uh, in the test settings. First, uh, I don't want my test to continue if there is any error during execution. And also, I want to capture uh, screenshots uh, during execution of my tests. So let's go to capture execution, set it to true, and include into report true. 
Okay, so I did adjustments and let's uh, execute our test. So I press play. Entropies uh, will play uh, all the actions that were just uh, recorded. So it needs some time to uh, attach to the browser. And then uh, it will perform all the actions. So what you see on screen uh, right now uh, is performed uh, automatically. Arrow piece. A new contact created. We we'll go to the grid. So since the script continues, then the, there are no any issues, and the report uh, of execution will be all green. That all uh, steps of our test have passed successfully. And uh, since we enabled a screenshot, then for each step you can see what was happened uh, in the application. Uh, also, a piece uh, generates the screen flow, which you can open and scroll and see what was happening during test execution. Actually, we could enable a screenshot capturing uh, during recording uh, as well. And uh, in some cases, uh, one can use this feature, the, this cool feature of RPs to um, create some uh, documentation for business processes and uh, uh, give these materials to users to learn how to uh, navigate uh, in the system. Okay, so let's uh, do some changes uh, to our test to see uh, how a failure in the test looks like. So let's uh, change uh, the name of the contact that we are going to create. So I save the test, press play. Okay, and the failure will be immediately because uh, the wrong tab was active at the moment. So, and let's do one more change to speed up execution. In the first line, I'm going to add the statement that ensures quick connection to the browser. Okay, play. So since the name uh, of the contact uh, is different, then uh, verification uh, of the name on the contact uh, page uh, should fail. Here it is. Okay, so we did not find the object here uh, because uh, this is really a different object. Uh, Let's talk uh, in more details about what object is. So during recording, uh, RPs captured controls with which I interacted. And you can see all these controls uh, in the tree to the left. And these controls are grouped uh, into windows where they were captured. And what is object in RPs? So what uh, object uh, is actually uh, actually consists of uh, two parts. First part is how to identify this object uh, during playback. Uh, RPs uses uh, expat selectors, uh, which are generated during uh, recording. Uh, if you want to adjust uh, the selector, you can uh, do this uh, easily uh, inside RPs. And uh, Besides a selector or locator, uh, object uh, consists of type. And the type determines which actions can be applied to this object and which properties uh, can be examined on this object. So for example, if we look uh, at this grid, uh, this is a pretty complex object. 
and rupees recognizes it uh, as a whole structure and uh, let's go to piece and expand the grid object and here you can see what you can do with the grid you can click on a cell you can click on a specific text you can get a text in a cell you can uh, examine uh, the columns and uh, row count of this grid and if you don't remember uh, what do click cell uh, should do, you can press F1 key combination and you will be presented uh, the API, API reference uh, for um, the grid object. And here you can see which parameters you can pass to it and uh, uh, how you can click uh, on the cell. Actually, Europeans has uh, a pretty complete description of all the objects and actions that you can uh, perform over this object. And you can always uh, see this uh, in the help file. Okay, uh, so uh, what next? So we created a test executed it so uh, let's see how we can make this test uh, data driven so let's go to our spreadsheet so what is data driven is that uh, you may want to separate uh, logic of your test from the data so here we enter some value the name of the contact uh, let's go in the beginning and add a few empty rows here and let's create a map and give it a name data so actually this is a table uh, embedded uh, into the into spreadsheet so you can uh, write your data right here so let's create columns First name, last name, company, and add values here. And what was the company we used here? Air Safety Inc. we can put all those values here and then uh, parameterize our test and, delete the row. and here uh, in the statement that enters uh, text uh, into first name field what i need to do is to select uh, my map data map and select uh, which column to use uh, first name the same is for the last name. And the same is for company. So right now, if, we, if I will execute my test, then all values will be uh, grabbed uh, from the table at the beginning of the spreadsheet. Uh, there is also a way to uh, put all these parameters uh, in external Excel spreadsheet and attach to this spreadsheet right here. So let's execute our test and see that the values are taken uh, from the table. And the test should fail again. Okay, so let's, uh, to make the test pass at this point, let's remove our verification statement here. Here it is. So just delete it. 
Okay. Uh, and since we, uh, if you remember, we created this test and linked it uh, to Spira team test case at the beginning. So let's save our test uh, into Spira team. So I press save to Spira button. And then uh, all files uh, from my test uh, will be uploaded uh, to Spira team server. So since all, fi all files are stored uh, on, in the Spira team, then uh, you can execute uh, this uh, test on any machine that has uh, rupees installed. So let's go to Spira team. And let's go to the list of test, ca of test cases. Uh, here is the test case that I created uh, together with my test. New contact test. And uh, we can see here that it is linked uh, to a piece test. Uh, to execute a test case uh, in Spira team, you need to create uh, a test set. So I go to test a list of test sets and uh, create a new test set. Let's name it demo test set. And uh, when after I created the test set, I need to choose uh, which test cases uh, to run. Uh, here I will use New contact test. Let's save it. And I need uh, a few more tweaks here. I need to specify <clears throat> an automation host. Automation host is a computer where a piece is installed and where a piece launcher is running. Uh, a piece launcher is a standalone application which is installed together with a piece. Uh, this it runs as a service, and it actually listens for uh, comments from Spira team. And if there is any test set that must be executed, then Rupees will download it and execute on the machine. So let's close Rupees here. And uh, in my uh, test set, I am going to set a schedule where when I want to execute it. So I go to plan date and I set uh, plan date to yesterday. So this test should be executed immediately since it is overdue. Let's save it. And here in the client setup of Repeat Launcher, you can see that it is configured to connect to specific instance of Spire team. And here is uh, the name of automation host. So this Repeat Launcher listens for comments for uh, this automation host. So in a few seconds, uh, we will see that uh, Repeat Launcher sees uh, that it needs to execute a test set. Yes, here it is. And in a few moments, after a piece launcher will download uh, test files from Spira team, uh, it will start executing. So you can see here that uh, the test is running. And when test execution uh, will be finished, uh, all the results uh, will be uploaded uh, to uh, Spira team. So it seems that execution finished. And I suspect that it failed because uh, the number of uh, records in this table 
uh, is not equal to three, it is a greater value. So let's go to Spire team to test around uh, that here. Let's do refresh. Okay, here is the test run uh, and here is our test case. I'm clicking on it. And here in Spire team, I can see exactly the same report as you saw in rupees. Uh, for each step which was performed uh, by the tool during uh, test playback, you can see the status, if it passed or failed, and uh, a screenshot. So let's scroll down and find out why the test failed. Okay, so verification of uh, number of columns failed. So this was really expected. Okay, uh, let's return to P. So when you first start uh, with the RPs, you can start with simple uh, record and playback uh, approach, and uh, you can use uh, RVL. So this is uh, pretty simple. You just uh, operate with the application or with, with your components uh, which you want to test uh, as end user, and RPs captures your actions and uh, captured actions are, are presented in a spreadsheet. So you can easily see what you recorded. Also, uh, before recording the test, uh, you can uh, enable uh, capturing screenshots during recording. And uh, in this case, uh, let me open another test. Uh, you will have a recording folder in the test. And if you will open the generated uh, screen flow, you will see uh, what was happening during uh, recording. So once you have simple spreadsheet, you can execute uh, your test and uh, get results. Uh, if you want to do something uh, more sophisticated, then uh, you can uh, also use the power of uh, JavaScript. So you can implement parts uh, of uh, test logic as JavaScript uh, functions. So you can go to JavaScript part of the test, you can define some function, write your JavaScript code here, and then when you return to RVL, you have ability to to call your function here. So this enables uh, the approach when you can use uh, people with different background on the testing pro uh, project. So you can have uh, people with programming background who would uh, implement some sophisticated logic uh, inside JavaScript functions. And you can have the main experts who know uh, business processes very well and all they need to do is to create uh, an RVL spreadsheet and uh, choose between uh, functions that were implemented by uh, developers. So uh, if you choose uh, to record uh, your test using JavaScript, you will get something like, uh, like this. Uh, 
Uh, here is the same test scenario uh, parameterized uh, with data in external spreadsheet. Here is the spreadsheet with some values. Here is my test. I read uh, the values from uh, the spreadsheet and then uh, I perform uh, the same steps as an RVL test. Uh, and the JavaScript code, which you can see here, is pretty simple to understand as well. So, for example, this line uh, instructs RPEs to find an object with ID uh, first name, and you can find this object in the object tree. Here it is, first name. And you need to perform a uh, do click action on this object. If you want to pass parameters here, then you need to pass these parameters uh, to the function. Okay, so uh, I think that uh, I covered uh, what I wanted uh, for today and we can proceed to Q&A section. Uh, if you have questions, uh, you can write them uh, into chat and Adam will uh, speak them aloud. And, or, or you can raise your hand and will uh, Adam will turn sound uh, on for you and uh, you will uh, ask the question yourself. Hello, thanks, Dennis. Uh, so if you have any questions, now is the time to ask. Please uh, either raise your hand. Uh, we can unmute you or unmute yourself. Or if you want to write in the chat window, uh, feel free to do that as well. Uh, there was one question that came in from Mark um, about the reporting. We may have already answered it, but I want to make sure. The question was, um, the previous screen showed two errors and 11 messages from the test. Where do we see the results? Mm. Uh, where do you see the results? Uh, so not sure uh, I got the question. Uh, it was in the middle of the play of the the adapt the webinar. So I think it was where do you access the oh the earlier screen? Um, oh, he said yeah, he said we answered it for him because it's the first time we've seen the product. So just to recap for anyone, um, the results are stored in a file inside Rupees that Dennis has got up on the screen, a TRP file. It's an XML file that Rupees shows in a nice colored format with screenshots. It will also archive them in a folder. Uh, you can see open there the reports folder. And then also you can um, save them to Spira Team, which Dennis also showed, where it's available in a centralized web portal so that executives or business managers, people who aren't necessarily using Rupees, they can see all the test cases, they can see all the results in the web browser on all the machines that are running it. So it provides a centralized view of all the test results. And you can even see the number that have passed, the number that have failed, and so on. Uh, so you're welcome. Uh, another question came in from Alexi. Uh, the question is, is it possible to execute on different browsers? Uh, yes, this is the nature of uh, cross-browser uh, methodology support in RPs. Uh, after recording uh, the test uh, on one browser, in our case, uh, this was uh, Firefox, uh, you can execute this test <coughs> on uh, different types of browsers. Uh, you can execute on Chrome uh, and on Internet Explorer. And uh, you can even uh, leverage uh, Selenium web driver and to execute uh, uh, tests on uh, remote machines. And uh, you can execute tests even on uh, Safari on Mac. And you, and you can also, uh, run it on a platform like Source Labs and Kubernetes or a browser stack as well. Um, oh, there's a follow-up question. Different browsers and hosts, even mobile. Yeah. No, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, we we can execute even on mobile browsers uh, through yeah. Selenium integration. Yeah, that is correct. 
Oh, question from Alexi. I see you're using Rupees 5.6. I only have 5.5. Can I use it for the same type of testing? Uh, support for Salesforce Lightning uh, will be publicly available in 5.6, uh, which will be released pretty soon. Uh, so you will have to wait a bit uh, for... Right. That's a good question. Repeat 5.5, which is the current version, that supports Salesforce Classic only uh, in terms of the grids. So, uh, Repeat 5.6 coming out soon, which you're seeing today. And that's what adds the support for um, Salesforce Lightning. That's a great question. Thanks for watching today's webinar. I hope it was useful. If you'd like to learn more about testing Salesforce or other applications, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a great day.